Hello, happy Friday. Happy, happy Friday. What a beautiful, glorious day today. Um, I'm getting through The Psychology of Totalitarianism by Matthias Desmet. I'm about halfway through. I'm in chapter 7, really getting into the details of mass formation that he talks about. And um, a really, really insightful book and very readable, um, very easy to, to understand. Um, he has amazing insights on developmental psychology. Um, I studied a smattering of psychology in school, you know, like the intro, maybe the first two or three courses which were considered uh, I apologize that my neighbor is working on his deck next door, so you're going to hear a lot of binging and banging. But yeah, I mean, I did the intro, you know, Pavlov's dog and things like that, the very basic stuff. But this guy is obviously a really in-depth uh, psychologist uh, uh, par excellence, uh, I guess you could say. But yeah, his insights on developmental psychology are really excellent. But the thing I like it the most is that it is so readable and so straightforward. Um, just, it's the kind of book that I definitely have to read more than once. And I'll have to go back and take notes on it. I mean, there are a few minor things that uh, kind of uh, I, I, I might be critical of. The way that he categorizes things into such discrete categories. I, I, I don't agree 100% with what he's saying on those things. But any complaints I'd have would be extremely, extremely minor. Um, just a very, a very excellent, excellent read. And um, because, obviously, he's an ex excellent psychologist, um, I thought it, it related to a video that I watched, I think it was two days ago, so it's already fading out of my memory. But I had a chance to sit and listen to uh, the latest presentation that Jordan Peterson did in Montreal, I believe it was last month, with Jonathan Pajot, and he um, posted that to his YouTube channel, and so I sat through that, and the difference that I found between these two psychologists is that Jordan Peterson, his level of vocabulary is so sophisticated that it makes him unapproachable and almost um, just very, very difficult to follow. And he's basically giving a a, uh, a solo speech, so to speak. Uh, Jonathan Pajot, we don't learn anything about him. He contributes almost nothing to the conversation. He's basically just there to keep Jordan Peterson moving along in his... Uh, self-absorbed um, discussion, if you want to call it a discussion. It's not a discussion. It's just his, his own personal presentation. But then again, that's why people pay to go see him. They want to hear him speak, right? So I'll give him that. Um, but I found um, it disturbing because he doesn't allow... And he did the same thing with Richard Dawkins. He doesn't allow the person he's supposedly discussing a topic with to have any input whatsoever. He's only interested in presenting his his own view, which is what I'm doing in, in this video, these videos that I'm doing. I'm only presenting my own view, but I don't bring somebody beside me to have them sit there and say nothing uh, because I find that just, um, I don't know. And so I thought... Um, Jordan Peterson, I was thinking, well, is he, is, he's certainly a solipsist to, to one degree or another, depending on how you define that term. But I thought, is he an egoist or an egotist? What's the difference between those two? And I thought, well, an egoist would be somebody who feels that they are the center of attention or wants to be the center of attention, but doesn't necessarily think that they are superior to to their audience. For example, the way that I present these videos that you're watching now, 
I would come across as an egoist because I'm like the only one here, right? And so I'm making a video and I'm the center of attention whether I like it or not. Um, but an egotist would be someone who allows themselves to be the center of attention but feels that they are superior to their audience. And I think that's what Jordan Peterson is. He, he, he comes across as a feeling, and fair enough, he's, he's got the training, he's, as a, as a psychologist, he knows all the, his, his research, he knows Nietzsche, he knows Jung, right, he, he knows all the, 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 the people that you're supposed to study to learn about psychology, and he knows Freud, like, the way that I might know a, a street map, he, he knows these, and of course he knows Solzhenitsyn, you know, the Russian gulags, he knows all those stories. And of course he knows the the horror and the and the drama of Dostoevsky and his work, right? These Russian writers that were able to have insights on the the nature of the darkness of the human soul and the human heart and, and what have you. So Jordan Peterson has a vast knowledge of all the famous psychologists and Obviously, he uses that to his advantage when he's expressing an idea. And he, and he comes up with flashes of brilliance throughout his discussion. But you have to sit through two hours of him ruminating and, and presenting complex language and, and going through this bizarre intellectual landscape before you get to the little nuggets of, of truth that he that he's able to, to expound upon. And so it's kind of painful and, and, and uh, laborious to get through or to even just to sit and listen to him. Whereas this one here is so much more straightforward as a psychologist speaking about the, the, the developmental psyche of, of a child and their mother and, and what have you. And now that I'm getting right into the thick of it about the development of mass formation, that one criticism I may have is that he does talk about the, 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 the displacement of morality or the collapse of morality and he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't suggest a replacement and I believe Jordan Peterson did the same thing in his speech uh, when I listened to him two days ago he talked about the collapse of morality and he even mentioned you know the resurrection and um, the spiritual things of which he's fond of speaking about and then he says, well, what do we replace them with? And I think he uses the term we as the royal we, he's speaking about himself. What, what does one replace that with? And he doesn't have an answer, just as, just as uh, Matthias Desmond. Now, I'm only halfway through, so I don't know if he provides an answer later on. Uh, I'm guessing he probably will suggest an answer. But he says that people have abandoned this Judeo-Christian morality. And what do they replace it with? And he doesn't provide an answer. And that, to me, is a, is, is a, a cop-out on behalf of the part of, of Jordan Peterson. He doesn't step up to the plate and says, well, we, we should replace it with this, or we should amalgamate the Judeo-Christian ethic into the, the fiber of our, of our communities, into the fiber of our collective conscious in this way. He doesn't. He doesn't provide that, unless he's 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 wanting to provide a replacement as his own insights, which are which are his own complex insights. Um, but anyway, uh, he finishes the speech. Jordan Peterson finishes his speech by 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 saying, making this statement. He says, "You think religious pe people are crazy, Jesus." He uses the Lord's name in vain at the end of the speech. Now, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He was talking about something different. He was talking about how the left wants to elevate women and say, we need to have more women representation in politics, in jobs, and what have you. And they elevate this uh, effort to... Um, increase women representation, let's say, in, in all fields of what have you. And at the same time, 
they say, well, there's no difference between men and women. And he mentions the Supreme Court nominee who wasn't even able to define what a woman was. And so he says, you can't have both. You can't say, well, we want to elevate women and at the same time say that there's no difference between a man and a woman. He says this, this violates the law of, of non-contradiction or however he expressed it. And so this is the context of when he makes that statement where he says, you think religious people are crazy. Jesus, he, he uses the Lord's name uh, as, as an exclamation point. And that's the last statement of his lecture. And the funny thing, he says, he says, well, that's a funny place to stop. So I think we'll stop there. Now, I don't know if he's referring to funny in the sense, you know, I feel like, I feel like Joe Pesci here. You know, how do you mean funny? What do you mean funny? You're talking about funny that the people are using two different definitions of women? Or you think it's funny that you're ending on that note and you use the Lord's name in vain and the crowd nervously laughs and giggles at your statement, which is a horrible thing to do. And Jordan Peterson should know better than to do that. For a guy that's already survived a horrible addiction, for a guy that has gone through painful spiritual experiences where you had to call out to God for him to be flippant and right after suggesting what do we need to replace or fill in the void of the resurrection or I'm thinking about you know how drunk he is on symbols as Dawkins accused him of he, he's able to bring in all that symbology and all those spiritual elements into his conversation and then leave his audience hanging. Yes, he's rescued a lot of people from futility and he's strengthened a lot of people. He's done a, a lot of good. He's shaken people awake of how they can improve their way of thinking, how they can improve their immediate surroundings, their immediate existence, their immediate mental. And as a, as a, a extremely talented and capable psychologist, no wonder he has the ability to do that. To, to help people in, in many, many ways who are, who are otherwise desperate and suicidal and lacking meaning, and he's able to steer people in the right direction. However, for him to cop out of his responsibility for the position that he's been in with the audience that he has to end his lecture by being so flippant, he's treading on very, very thin grounds I'm not going to speak on behalf of who he has to deal with because that's between him and them. But you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that the commandment that says you don't use the Lord's name in vain because the, God won't hold him guiltless, right? He will have to deal with that in his conscience and he's bringing down pain upon himself unnecessarily. And not only that, he is adding to the confusion of his audience who is looking for a different way to embody those symbols, a different way to fulfill those spiritual needs that people have, which can only be found in theism and to a greater extent discovering who Christ is and how that can be implemented into the human psyche, whatever religion the person happens to adhere to. The concept of salvation, the concept of the resurrection, these are concepts that need to be evaluated and implemented cross-culturally and cross-religious boundaries. And he knows that. He's discovered that. He's danced around it like a ballerina dancing around all these different topics and not willing to sit down and take responsibility for what he knows to be truth. He always said, oh, I act as if God exists. That's a cop-out. Jordan Peterson is an egotistical cop-out. He needs to take responsibility for what he knows to be true and say it as it deserves to be said, not flippantly to end his speech by, by saying, oh, Jesus, you know. That's a wicked thing to do. He shouldn't do that. And he knows better than to do that. And that's up to him. If he wants to straighten himself out and put his pants on and say, people need Christ. People need to understand what the resurrection is all about. People need to understand 
how to implement sacrifice into their own lives, to lay down their egos, to lay down their lives for the sake of truth. But he's not willing to say that. All he wants to do is play with his fingers and entertain people with his intellectual words. He keeps doing that. And that's, that's, that's an egotistical cop-out in my opinion. He needs to come back down to earth and speak to people in lucid language like this gentleman has done, Matthias Desmet. This guy is a hero. And this guy is a superior psychologist than Jordan Peterson is. So Jordan should be listening to this guy and quoting this guy as a psychologist. This is what people need to hear. People, If more people read this book, they would be healed. They would awaken from their stupor that has captured the minds of the bulk of Canadians. They've been captured into a mass formation as he describes so eloquently in his book, The Psychology of Totalitarianism. And of all people who are expert in the, in the, in the psychology of totalitarianism, Jordan Peterson would be very, very high on that list. So he has a responsibility that I think he's shucking. He is skirting around the issues and he's skirting around the deepest truth known to humanity that has been evident for the past 2,000 years since we've perfected the ability of language, since the essentially the Rosetta Stone of human civilization. No wonder it was written on the cross in three languages, right? Jesus Christ, King of the Jews, in Aramaic, in Hebrew, in Latin. I don't know what it was three languages were, but it was it was at the at the fullness of time when that message could be delivered to all of humanity. Not before, not after, at the exact right time. Christ came and died for the sins of the world. And that's what people need to recognize. That that was possible and only possible through the divine dispensation of our Heavenly Father that allowed that to happen. You have to decide on your own what you do with Christ, whether you put him in the position as a prophet, whether you put him in, for the Muslims, they put him in a position as a prophet. For the Christians, they put him in the position as divine, as, as God himself. And for other cultures, they put him in position as an aspiration to what they want to attain to in their own self-sacrifice. So depending on the culture and the situation of the person, the solution is the same. Looking to Christ to understand the Father, the God, the Creator of all heaven and earth, to whom alone we are responsible. That's all I have to say about that. So, it's a magnificent, beautiful Friday today. It's so glorious outside. I hope you're having a great day. I've got a coffee on the go. I'm catching a buzz off this beautiful, beautiful weather. I, I feel like it's intoxicating. Even though I, I, I've been cannabis free now for, for coming on two years. Thank God for that. And um, it still gives me that buzz early in the morning to see the sun shining and the warmth. Um, and so I don't need that anymore to ease the pain of life or to ease the, the pain of my own mortality, the recognition that I have to leave soon. That can be very painful, but, um, but now that pain has drifted away because I've been so blessed and so, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's kind of like, I don't want to say use the term it's finished because I, I, I would never compare my life to, to, to the one who said that and who suffered so much. I, I, I've, I've suffered nothing in comparison, uh, but all my suffering has been mental and, and internal in uh, my mind and my heart. That's what uh, damaged my heart. Anyway, um, I hope you're having a fantastic Friday so far. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this day uh, tidying up. Uh, it's garbage day today. Every time the garbage truck goes by, it feels like Santa Claus came. It feels like Christmas. It's like, wow, 
what a great use of tax dollars. They, they, they put the garbage out at the street and somebody actually comes and picks it up and takes it away. So after unpacking all the boxes and all that stuff, there was like seven or eight bags of garbage. And I don't know if they're going to take it. I think you're only allowed to put out like four per garbage pickup. Got a huge mattress and box spring out there. I don't know if they're going to take that. Um, but I'll find out very, very soon. That's the highlight of my day, seeing if the garbage comes by. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, wherever you are, have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. I love you. And I know that God does too. I hope you have a fantastic day. Remember that you are the center of your creation, solipsism, in a positive way. That word is sometimes used negatively. But in a positive way, God created your reality and placed you at the center of it. Isn't it true that the scientists said when they went out and examined the universe and took measurements, they said no matter where they went in space, the earth was expanding from that point all, in all directions, kind of like on the surface of a balloon. Remember that, that quantum concept that they talked about? So God created your reality and put you at the center of it. Because there is no other way that we can experience this reality except from our own egocentric viewpoint, right? I look at my reality from this, my own center, and I try and defeat ego so that I don't allow that to alienate myself from those around me that Jordan Peterson does so often. But instead, one out of many, e pluribus unum, to understand that each and every person is the center of their reality. So for you watching this, I'm just some weird, crazy guy that happens to be passing through your reality. But what are the odds that you're seeing this message? Out of 7 billion people, you happen to see me sitting here saying, God loves you so much that he made you the center of your reality. And everything revolves around you. Not that you're responsible for saving the world, but perhaps saving your world. That you are the center of your world. And how you relate to that world ripples through the entire universe. So we look to our leaders and say, well, our leaders are corrupt. How do we solve that? By railing on them, by complaining about them? Or do we look inside and say, what's wrong with me that I've allowed this leader to, to, to lead me? I need to repent and say, God, heal me first. Heal me first so that I can pray for my leaders. Open my eyes so that I can pray that my leader's eyes are open. You know, rescue me, heal me so that I can rescue and heal others. Well, God loves you so much that he made you the center of your reality. If you happen to be watching this video, I am absolutely 100% convinced that God is all powerful and he puts you in the center of your reality for a purpose. No matter what your faith, no matter what your religious beliefs, doesn't matter. You can adopt any faith that you want. Some people it's a form of spirituality. Some people it's Buddhism. Some people it's this. Some people it's that. It doesn't really matter. It's, that's simply an expression of how you want to reconcile your, your spiritual feelings. But at the core of your spiritual feelings is theism, the idea that you've been created and the idea that you've been placed in a very special place where you have self-awareness. That is the gift of God. That is the Spirit of God. Scripture says that the body without the Spirit is dead. If you didn't have a Spirit, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be alive. But you have a Spirit. That inner voice inside of you that tells you that God loves you and cares about you. Even though perhaps He's very, very silent. And He only speaks to us through His creation at this time. All the more valuable that the faith that we have when it's not spoken to us directly, right? When Thomas said, I'm not going to believe unless I can actually touch him and hold him. And Christ said, how blessed are those who don't see and yet believe. And he even prayed for those who would believe based on their testimony. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Not once, twice, three times, four times. He prayed for those who would believe based on their testimony. And said, God, I don't pray for the world but I pray for those who will believe on me because of their testimony. And that's you who are watching this today. You who are watching this today, 
God loves you. He provided the penalty for you through Christ. And he wants to give you happiness and success in this life and the next. Whatever that may mean for you. Whatever that may mean for you. A blessed, peaceful existence is available to us starting here today, now. Christ said the kingdom of God has come. Now it starts. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven. We can start experiencing heaven here now. We don't have to go through torture and humiliation on a cross because he already did it for us. If there was value in suffering, he wouldn't have had to do that. He doesn't say, oh, follow me, and then you'll have to go through your own cross. All right, all right. He said, take up your cross and follow me. But he also said, take my yoke upon you because my burden is light. It's easy. It's a blessed life to put God first. It's a blessed life. It's easy path. I know, I know. Yeah, it's a narrow path and this, this. But take the whole thing in concept and absorb it into your hearts and mind. Feed on the words of Christ and he will let you know the easy path. He'll say, this is the way. Go this way. Remember the scripture that says, you know, listen for that direction, that intuitive direction that this is the way I want you to go. Follow this path and it leads to life every single time. It protects us from ourselves, from our own foolish mistakes and God is faithful. He will guide you in the right path. He will rescue you and give you a blessed, happy life. I, I sincerely believe that. I mean, look at me. I'm living large here. I'm having a coffee on a Friday. I'm living in a paradise. What more could I ask for? Glory to God. I thank him every day for his mercy. And I pray he blesses you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic Friday. Have a fantastic weekend. Maybe I'll see you next week and make some more videos or do something crazy. <laughs> We'll see what happens. God bless you. I love you. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the sunshine. Get up, get some fresh air today. Make sure you do. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now. Take care. I love you. Bye-bye.